Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, hello friends, uh, welcome back. So, in the last class, uh, we have seen that we did uh, turbulent uh, non premix flames. So, in this class, we will start with turbulent premix flames and go into several aspects of it. Uh, in this class on turbulent premix flames, we will mainly go into a lot of uh, the physical aspects of it, like the, the structure of turbulent premix flames, which we will explain in terms of things called regime diagrams. Uh, which we did on a uh, little bit for non premix flame flames also. And then we will introduce um, uh, some modeling approaches in the sense which we will call this G equation approach as well as the um, Bray Moss Levy models. And subsequently, we will introduce a very important quantity for turbulent flames, premix flames called the turbulent flame speeds. So, as such, you have seen that for laminar premix flames, the most important quantity that determines. Uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, the most important property of a turbulent of a laminar premix flame is a is a is a laminar flame speed. Similarly, the most important property for a turbulent premix flame is the turbulent flame speed. So we'll go into that and uh, towards the end of this class. Okay. So first we'll go with uh, with uh, basically these things called the uh, the, the uh, we'll go with uh, with this uh, regime diagrams. Okay. And then we will go with this uh, G equation model, Bremos Levy model, and turbulent flame speeds. And the majority of this material is mainly taken from uh, the turbulent combustion book by Norbert Peters and a little bit from uh, the turbulent flows by Pope also. So, uh, where do we find uh, turbulent premix flames in engineering uh, devices? Turbulent premix flames is found in SI engines spark ignition engines and car engines which are used in car engines and um, uh, in gas turbine engines of course uh, we, and uh, mainly in stationary power plants and industrial gas burners you find turbulent premix flames. Now, gas turbine engines as we have discussed in last class that uh, mainly because gas turbine engines use liquid fuels the flames that are formed are mainly non premix flames, but still as you have seen that in non premix flames you really cannot control the temperature as such um, or the temperature of the flame though you can control the exhaust gas temperature by dilution with the excess air, but the temperature of the flame really cannot be controlled for um, in non premix flames and that leads to formation of this pollutants and uh, stoichiometric combustion or near stoichiometric combustion rich combustion leads to formation of this soot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you really uh, cannot avoid pollutant formation in non premix flames. Now, whereas we have seen that for the premix flame of course, the premix flame temperature is totally controlled by the stoichiometry uh, that is if you have a fuel lean mixture of course, the temperature is less if you have a stoichiometric mixture the temperature is high. So, uh, that is why uh, you have a better control on the on the flame temperature if you have a premix flame. Okay. So, that is why it is uh, we in, 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 uh, in uh, the gas turbine engines even for the aircraft engines to uh, with the stringent uh, with the stringent emission norms that are coming uh, the aircraft engine industry is moving more and more towards premix flames and as such uh, you have seen in the last class also that this uh, very modern engine this GE and X engines which they use for uh, powering the Boeing 787 aircraft and uh, the, the TAPS combustors that they use. Uh, 2 nanolar premix solar combustor and that is essentially a lean premix pre vaporized combustor. Okay. So, it is um, a large fraction of the flame that is formed in this TAPS combustors or this um, uh, this, this uh, GNX uh, engine combustors, they are essentially premix flames. So, as you have seen the, 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 the industry, the air the aircraft industry is moving towards premix flames and the reason is simply the following that you can have much less pollution for, uh, pollutant formation in this kinds of um, uh, in this kinds of uh, combustor. So, that is why the gas turbine industry is shifting more towards uh, lean premix flames. Okay. And uh, then uh, well, of course, uh, it, it has you have to have the additional process of premixing. So, uh, we are we are moving uh, towards that and that is why it is important to understand how turbulent premix flames behave. So, here on the right hand side you see this image or this video of, uh, of turbulence uh, uh, like a, tur a turbulence um, impacting on a, on a initially flat 
premix flame okay so this is this blue surface initially is a flat it's essentially a laminar premix flame and then turbulence comes and impinges on that okay so uh, this surface is actually a representative surface of the premix flame so it's essentially an iso surface of temperature of about 500 kelvin which is selected from the premix flame so you see that uh, premix flame has a this kind of a structure right the temperature increases like this this is unburned this is burnt okay and this is uh, this is the burn gas temperature this is unburned gas temperature so you can select actually one particular uh, temperature uh, inside that which is a 500 kelvin and you can uh, we can when you when you basically look at it in 3d it's essentially a flat surface like this if it was a laminar premix flame right La planar laminar premix flame now then this turbulence comes in on it and impinges and it creates this sort of different things but what this does, this actually you see the different vortex, uh, uh, this is actually a beautiful visualization of the turbulence also, this is essentially uh, you get this uh, vorticity structures, this fine scale vorticity structures that are forming on the premix flame. So, you see that in this premix flame, uh, uh, what it happens when as soon as it impinges on this, on this, uh, on this surface, uh, it essentially folds and wrinkles the surface at a multitude of length and time scales. Okay, and this length and time scales are controlled by both turbulence as well as the intrinsic flame properties. Okay, and then after it uh, folds and wrinkles the premix flame at a multitude of length and time scales, you see that this, uh, this surface uh, essentially uh, annihilates in this trailing regions of the flame. So the flame, this turbulence essentially uh, essentially stretches, folds, and wrinkles the the surface at different length and time scales, and then this surface is actually destroyed. Okay, this iso surface of temperature is actually destroyed. So, then that means there is a continuous generation of surface also. So, a premix flame structure that you have a turbulent premix flame is this complex uh, or this convoluted wrinkled structure that you see is actually characterized by continuous generation and annihilation of the turbulent of the of the surface of the flame surface by turbulence. So, this is how turbulence actually inter interacts with the premix flame and this interaction between turbulence and, uh, so the and, and combustion and the, and the flame uh, is what gives the resultant structure. So, the resultant structure of this uh, turbulent flame that you see is not a property only of the flame or a property only of the turbulence, it is a property that emerges due to interaction between the turbulence and the flame. So, you have to, to understand this one has to know the turbulence as well as combustion very well. So, that is why we have, uh, so we have spent in this, uh, uh, in this class, uh, in the previous classes we have spent so much time on understanding the basic properties of flames okay so you have to understand the basic properties of the flame you have to understand both the basic properties of uh, turbulence and then only you can understand this kind of um, turbulence flame interaction but this is what is uh, uh, some some form of this is what is happening in a gas turbine engine right and so this is a very simplified version of what is uh, or, a, or, a, or a unit version not a simplified version it's an unit it's an unit building block of what is um, happening in the in the gas turbine uh, in, uh, in the, is happening in the gas turbine engine so it is important to understand this so there is it's a, as you see it's a beautiful phenomena it's a it's a very complex phenomenon also and that's why it makes uh, challenging and that's what makes this scientific study on turbulent premix flames very enriching Okay. So, it, there is a continuous interaction between turbulence and, and, and the flame and of course, as you see uh, that, uh, mm, that the turbulence uh, um, interacts with the flame at a different, uh, at different uh, length scales that is captured in this, in this video. Okay, now, uh, as I have said that this, this uh, of course, uh, uh, in an engine the flame can be more complex due to presence of shear, etc. Here just it is a, it's a turbulent flow which is carried by the, carried by a mean flow into this, uh, by a mean flow carries this turbulence onto this, um, onto this premix flame uh, uh, which impinges on this premix flame. Uh, of course, in an engine as you see here that this uh, this main flame branch uh, it's it's uh, actually stabilized in this uh, shear layers okay in this main shear layer as you see it's stabilized in the shear layer so the presence of the shear also adds one more complexity to the flame structure okay but nevertheless um, uh, this we need to um, this these are complex uh, phenomena but this complex complicated phenomena is what this complex interaction between turbulence and uh, flame is what determines what will be the final heat release rate output from the engine what will be the where the flame will be stabilized if it can be ignited and uh, what will be the final temperature profile at the exit of the combustor. Okay, so, many things that is what determines uh, this um, is, is emerges from this turbulence flame interaction. Okay.
So now to understand that uh, how does turbulence interact with the with the with the with the flame and uh, we need to basically compare uh, the characteristic length and time scales in a turbulent flow with the corresponding scales of chemical reaction and laminar flame okay so that is uh, uh, is uh, that is uh, uh, important and um, uh, uh, we need to consider basically length and time scales of the of the of the flame of the of the turbulent flow and compare with the corresponding length and time scales with the flame and then we find out under where turbulence will win where the flame will win and where both can be at a competitive uh, can can compete with each other okay so the comparison of the scales helps in uh, assessing whether laminar flame structure can exist in turbulent flow so that is one very important okay that we have understood uh, the we have taken up the structure of the laminar flame in a great details now the question is that is this uh, when you have turbulence is this uh, laminar flame structure whether this structure is reasonably well preserved and only it bends and folds uh, that's all so is it what is a turbulent flame just a bended form of a laminar flame under what conditions can that kind of a structure exist okay of course you can ex you can expect that if the turbulence is extremely strong okay so then the inner structure of the turbo of the of this laminar flame will be destroyed so in that case it may not exist like this so we need to find out under what regimes this laminar structure of this uh, flame can be preserved under what uh, regimes this laminar structure of the flame will not be preserved and it will be something entirely new so the length and time scales of a laminar flame we can define like this so this is actually just a new notation this ll is nothing but the flame thickness so if you remember that we uh, discussed uh, uh, laminar flame structure like this and this was a diffusion length scale we defined that ld is equal to alpha by uh, sl so here what we do is that we assume the lewis number to be 1 okay the lewis number is equal to 1 and hence our our alpha is equal to di and our di is equal to a common diffusivity like d so we don't uh, assume any distinct diffusivities we don't assume any distinct uh, non unity lewis number so our lewis number is unity our dis dis diffusivities are all same so alpha is equal to di and di equal to d this means alpha is equal to d and then we can replace alpha with d so our ll which is a characteristic laminar flame thickness okay this is a characteristic laminar flame thickness is essentially d by sl so this is what we already when uh, obtained before from the uh, laminar premix flame class so if it is d by sl the corresponding time scale is essentially ll by sl and which we can write by as d by sl square so that's what we have done okay now in a turbulent flow field the length scales and time scales okay so we have got um, uh, we have got two essentially character there can be other length scales also but in uh, we have got essentially two uh, bo two bordering um, length and time scales one is uh, at the beginning of the inertial range you get this integral length scale and the, the right at the end of the inertial range after that in the dissipative range you have got the kolmogorov scale so both the time scales and the length scales can correspond to integral and kolmogorov uh, integral or kolmogorov time scales so we have essentially then um, for flames uh, you have uh, the length scale as ll for turbulence you have uh, l0 uh, or eta and similarly the time scales for this you have tau l whereas for this you have uh, tau 0 and you have tau eta okay so these are the the different uh, the length and um, and the and the time scales uh, that you have okay so um, the, these are the different length scales and term scales have. now of course uh, we also assume that the schmidt number that is the schmidt number is nothing but uh, nu by d so that is also equal to unity so essentially all our schmidt number prandtl number everything is unity and our lewis number is also unity so all this uh, non dimensional thermophysical properties are essentially same uh, so all this non dimensional numbers are same and all the sum of physical properties are essentially same so nu essentially nu is equal to t is equal to d is equal to mm, uh, is equal to alpha okay so and uh, these regimes that we will define it is important to remember that these regimes which will define are only tentative and should not be used as to take as uh, strict demarcations so it is not that uh, these regimes that we will define is just uh, only it exists only this kind of structure only exists within this regime strictly and it cannot be found outside because the regimes this boundary is a little bit blurred what I mean will become apparent very soon okay now some important uh, non dimensional numbers are obtained on comparison of scales between turbulence and laminar flame which help in making the regime diagram so what are these non dimensional numbers so the first non dimensional number of course you can understand in a turbulence um, uh, class of course the important uh, the non dimensional number is reynolds number now since our reynolds number our our nu is equal to d 
or the Reynolds number which we essentially define as in terms of the u0 prime which is essentially the urms right so it is the uh, 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 the uh, u u prime it is a root mean square of the fluctuating uh, uh, the fluctuating component of velocity okay so that that is defined as u0 prime and that is used in our definition for Reynolds number l0 is my integral length scale okay so u0 prime is the rms of fluctuating component of velocity and L0 is the integral length scale. If you have any questions, you can uh, go back to the previous uh, notes of turbulent flows where we defined all these properties. And this is of course, you had by nu. Now, since nu is equal to d and d is equal to S L times L L, we can replace nu with S L times L L and we get essentially u 0 prime by L 0 divided by S L times L L. Okay. So, then it becomes the Reynolds number essentially becomes a ratio of your characteristic velocity scales, turbulent velocity scale to the uh, flame velocity scale or flame speed scale to the ratio of the turbulent uh, length scale to the flame length scale. Okay. So, that is what it becomes you can clearly see here that the numerator in this and this this one is uh, is essentially uh, this this guy is essentially the ratio of uh, uh, this this first term is the ratio of your um, your um, Okay, this is the ratio of your urms to flame speed and this is the ratio of l0 by ll okay so clearly this uh, tells you about uh, that um, uh, how strong the the turbulence is as it uh, as the reynolds number should tell there are other numbers uh, also and uh, there are other numbers uh, like uh, something there is a something called a kolovitz number what is a kolovitz number kolovitz number is uh, essentially i'll just show the de derivation here clearly kolovitz number is the ratio of flame time scale to the Kolmogorov time scale. Okay. Now, I can write that tau L which is a unit of second okay, in terms of uh, that characteristic diffusivity which has an unit of meter square per second and the length scale which is a unit of meters okay so i can write this tau l as l l square by d so this is meter square this is meter square per second so tau l is equal to seconds okay similarly i can write tau eta as eta square by nu why? Because you remember by Kolmogorov's first simulated hypothesis, the small scale should be determined only by nu and uh, if uh, uh, required by uh, epsilon. Okay, so, of course, in the definition of eta, you have a definition of epsilon. So, here we can just form this tau eta by eta and epsilon and, uh, and nu. Okay. Now, we can replace this by d okay, because nu is equal to d. So, we can write this as d. So, then this big I becomes nothing but L L square by eta square. Okay. You can just reduce this. Okay. It is only becomes just simple L L square by eta square and then I can write L L square by L 0 square which is my integral length scale to L 0 square by eta square. So, it is the becomes then the ratio of the square of the ratio of the flame length scale to the integral length scale and the 
integral length scale to the Kolmogorov length scale. Now, what is the ratio of integral length scale to the Kolmogorov length scale? Okay, that we should derive. Now, for that, if you remember, then we have to find out essentially what eta is. Okay, if we remember the definition once again, going to Kolmogorov's first simulated hypothesis, eta should be only based on nu, that is the kinematic viscosity and turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. Okay, so if eta has a length of meters and epsilon has a unit of eta has a uh, dimension of uh, or, or units of meters and epsilon has uh, this turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate has a dimension of meter square per second cube and nu has dimension of meter square per second then eta must be defined you have to eliminate s. So, it is essentially defined as nu cube by epsilon to the power of one fourth and that is the definition of Kolmogorov length scale. Okay. Fine. So, if I write eta by L0, what I get is nu cube by epsilon to the power of one fourth by one by L0. Now, what is epsilon? Epsilon is nothing but u prime cube by L0. So, we can just substitute so then this becomes now this L0 can go inside and this will have can go inside here this will have cube uh, once it because it is inside. So, then it becomes nu cube by u 0 cube times L 0 cube to the power of 1 fourth. What is this? This is essentially Reynolds number to the power of 3. So, then this becomes R e 0 to the power of 3 by 4. Okay. Now, this is a very very important uh, uh, thing. So, this tells you the how the scale separation looks like. So, eta by L0 is equal to R e 0 to the power of minus 3 by 4. Okay. This is a very, very important expression. So, as the Reynolds number increases, the scale separation increases. So, that is why when in a turbulent jet, when the Reynolds number increases, the largest length scale remains same, but the smallest length scale it becomes finer and finer and the smallest length scale decreases. Okay. So, now we can then put this thing here. So, essentially my Karlovich number becomes or we uh, this is one way to write it the other way would be We have just substituted the nu by uh, with S L times uh, uh, with S L times uh, uh, L L that is the substitution we have done. And then this comes to be equal to This is minus because this is inverted half times e prime by S L to the power of 3 by 2. All right. So, then this implies
Oh, sorry. Let's go to scene here. So that's what we have got here also. So, or we can just write this here. So, u prime by s l that is the ratio of the turbulent velocity scale divided by the flame speed scale is equal to Kolovich number to the power of 2 thirds times L 0 by L l that is their integral length scale by the flame thickness to the power of 1 thirds. So, we can define another non dimensional number. Now, this is based on uh, based on the integral time scale to the flame time scale. Remember, Kolovich number is the ratio of the flame time scale to the Kolmogorov time scales. So, the turbulent dam column number is based on the ratio of the integral time scale to the flame time scale. Okay? And we can define the integral time scale is nothing but L 0 that is the integral length scale divided by the u prime RMS that is the RMS of the fluctuating velocity. And the flame time scale is of course, L L by S L. So, we can write this simple dam, dam column number as L 0 by L L at times u prime by S L the inverse. So, you see we have got numerous non-dimensional numbers that uh, Reynolds number is essentially if I just uh, write Reynolds number here, we have written u prime by S L times L uh, 0 by L L. Okay. So, you see these groups u prime by S L that is the non ratio of the turbulent uh, RMS velocity divided by the flame speed and the ratio of the integral length scale to the flame thickness these two groups these two non-dimensional groups appear repeatedly and these are basically used to construct the different non-dimensional numbers. Okay. So, but then we can use these two groups u prime by SL and n 0 by L L to essentially construct or something like a regime diagram. So, we put n 0 by L L that is the ratio of integral length scale to flame thickness. Okay. We put this on the x axis and we put ratio of RMS of fluctuating velocity to the flame speed on y axis. Okay. So, this is u prime by SL is that the ratio and this is the other ratio. So, then we can construct this regime diagrams. Now, we will discuss the different regimes. Okay. So, you see that the, 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 the parameters that we had. Okay. So, the parameters that we had was essentially Reynolds number was u prime by S L times L 0 by L L okay. or u prime by S L is equal to R E 0 times L 0 by L L to the power of minus 1. Okay. The other parameters was dam column number is equal to u prime by s l is equal to dam column number inverse times l 0 by l l. Okay. 
okay and Kolovitz number is u prime by s l is equal to k to the power of two thirds times l zero by l l to the power of one third. Okay, so this do you see the important thing is that in the log log plot this will be appear just like straight lines. Okay, u prime by s l and uh, so if this is we choose this as x and this as y, so it's essentially x is equal to some constant times y to the power of one thirds. So in a log log plot the one third will just become uh, come on the come on the uh, left hand side come on in as a appear as a coefficient and it will appear just straight lines ok. So, this regime diagram is essentially on a log log plot ok the both the axis are on log uh, log scales uh, when log with logarithm base 10 and all these lines these different lines are essentially this this lines is constant Reynolds number constant number number constant Kolovitz number this will appear as essentially um, uh, as straight lines. So, the Reynolds number equal to one line is uh, is basically what demarcates between a turbulent flame and a laminar flame. So, this is this line that the Reynolds number is equal to one line ok. So, of course, you see the Reynolds number this is x uh, x y is equal to constant and in a log log plot this rectangular hyperbola will appear as a straight line with a uh, negative slope ok uh, as you see here. And uh, so, anything beyond this this regime ok is a is a laminar flame regime. So, we are not interested in this regime ok. Now, if the u prime by s l is less than 1 ok. So, if the u prime by s l is less than 1 that means that flame speed is much much faster than the than u prime than the fluctuating velocity. So, the flame will propagate even before the fluctuating velocities can cause any disturbance of the flame the flame will cross them ok. So, this will be mildly this this side of flames will only be mildly wrinkled by the uh, only be oh, will be just mildly wrinkled with the um, uh, will only be just uh, mildly wrinkled with the uh, by the by the turbulence. So, this regime is essentially called the wrinkle flame regime. So, this regime this u prime by s l is equal to 1 which is less than 1 this will be on this uh, this will be called the wrinkle flamelets regime ok. Because the flame speed is smaller than the fluctuating velocities all right. Now, comes the two interesting regimes called the corrugated regime and the, the three interesting regimes essentially the corrugated regimes, the reaction sheet regime and the well stirred reactor regime ok. Now, the corrugated regime is essentially the boundary between u prime by s l equal to 1 and the Kolovitz number the flame Kolovitz number equal to 1 line ok. So, this Kolovitz number equal to 1 line ok will appear. So, if we put in this expression if you put Kolovitz number equal to 1 ok. The Kolovitz number equal to 1 if you remember the Kolovitz number was essentially the ratio of the flame time scale to the Kolmogorov time scales all right. So, if the flame time scale is equal to the Kolmogorov time scales then that uh, 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 essentially uh, becomes uh, Kolovitz number equal to 1 and this also boiled down to the fact that your uh, your uh, uh, f f f this uh, your the, the it boiled down to the fact that your flame thickness by the Kolmogorov uh, um, uh, by the Kolmog by the by the Kolmogorov length scale was also can be defined as a Kolovitz number. So, it is L L by eta whole square ok. So, when Kolovitz number is equal to 1 it means your flame time scale is equal to your uh, your Kolmogorov time scale all right all right. Now, also it means that your flame length scale is equal to your uh, Kolmogorov length scale. So, the flame time is equal to the Kolmogorov time and your flame thickness that is if this is a flame. Uh, so, then uh, if this is the flame thickness so then it the, the smallest eddies of turbulence which are the Kolmogorov eddies uh, which is also of the same size ok. So, this is the uh, idea. So, this regime is essentially composed of uh, uh, means this this line essentially means this limiting condition is reached when the flame time is equal to the Kolmogorov time and the flame thickness is equal to the Kolmogorov uh, eddies. In this regime in this beyond in this smaller than this regime the Kolmogorov eddies are essentially much larger than the flame thickness. So, the flame actually in all these regimes that we have discussed the flame actually remains undisturbed the flame structure or the preheat zone remains undisturbed by turbulence. But now in this regimes greater than the Kolmogorov number equal to 1 regime 
okay. Once the flame time or the flame thickness becomes bigger than the Kolmogorov order of length scale. That means, when the flame thickness is bigger than the smallest scales in turbulence, then the idea is that then the smallest scales of turbulence can enter into the preheat zone and distort the structure there. As such, it can enhance the molecular diffusion with turbulent diffusion in the preheat zone. Okay. So, this is the uh, structure. Okay. So, in this regime, so if I just draw, so this regime is just simple uh, wrinkle flamelets regime. This flame in this regime, the corrugated flamelets regime, the flame can be strongly wrinkled like this, okay, but its internal structure will still be very much preserved. Even the preheat zone and the and the reaction zone, even it will be preserved. But in this reaction sheet regime, okay, the, what it means is that because the flame time is now greater than the Kolmogorov time or the flame length scale, the flame thickness is now greater than the Kolmogorov uh, length scale. The Kolmogorov eddies can now penetrate into the preheat zone and distort the flame structure there. So this structure will look something like this. The actual laminar flame structure will not be perfectly preserved, and you can have eddies inside this preheat zone in this reaction sheet regime, and it can distort. Okay, but you still see that now only the flame thickness is bigger than the Kolmogorov length scale. There is one more length scale associated with the flame which we have not discussed in turbulent combustion, but we did discuss in laminar combustion that is the reaction zone thickness. You remember the, the reaction zone thickness and the preheat zone thickness they were uh, given by a ratio of 1 by Zeldovich number. Okay. So, the reaction zone thickness is still greater than uh, is still much smaller than the uh, preheat zone thickness. But now, if the reaction zone thickness, okay, if you replace the Kolmogorov of uh, the this Karlovitz number definition now, instead of the flame time scale, instead of the flame time scales which was based on the preheat zone uh, thickness and the flame speed, if you put the reaction zone thickness and the flame speed, then correspondingly you will get essentially the reaction zone thickness. You can define a Karlovitz number based on the reaction zone as your L r square by eta square. Okay. So, if now the L r square that is or the, or the L r that is reaction zone thickness becomes bigger than your preheat than your than your uh, Kolmogorov length scale then what will happen is that then the Kolmogorov eddies will even penetrate inside the reaction zone and can distort it okay so this is this can lead to this kind of a broken flamelet structure where this even this reaction zone has essentially has broken up okay so once again to i'll i'll summarize this so here these two are very for, for turbulent combustion actually uh, in the gas turbine combustion or SI engine combustion happens in basically in this reaction sheet limit. Which means that uh, why do we call it by the re reaction sheet limit? We call it reaction sheet limit because uh, here in this uh, in this uh, in this structure the eddies the Kolmogorov of eddies can distort the preheat zone thickness. But since the reaction zone thickness is still much smaller than the Kolmogorov of sized eddies the reaction zone structure remains undisturbed okay and the reaction zone structure resembles to that of a laminar flame which is not disturbed it can be bent but it's not the structure is not disturbed and as such uh, we can still approximate it using a uh, in the reaction sheet limit so that is why it's called the reaction sheet zone and uh, the uh, whereas the previous part um, Whereas the previous, whereas the 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 the, uh, the part which is preceding it, that is a preheat zone, that is now thoroughly disturbed with the uh, with the Kolmogorov of size eddies. All right. So these are the different regimes that we have, and as you see that these lines are obtained essentially with the, uh, uh, the with this is the U prime by SL is equal to one line, and this line is very important, which is essentially the Karlovitz number equal to one line. And the importance of Karlovitz number was essentially found out by, um, uh, of course, this is named after Karlovitz, but this was uh, found out by Williams. Mm, okay, uh, so now this uh, uh, this this is of course uh, 
mm, uh, very important uh, that um, in this uh, that there is a distinction between these two regimes. But as I said, that um, these regimes, uh, the boundaries should not be taken um, you know, to be extremely like very sacrosanct as such. Uh, there, there can be flames which exist in the corrugated flamelets regime, which um, can have a, uh, a structure which is similar to the reaction street structure, and vice versa. But mainly in this regime, when you see the turbulence is also weakened because the Kolovitz number is essentially small; it's less than one. It belongs to the corrugated flameless regime, whereas in this reaction sheet limit, which is also called the thin reaction zone regime, is actually a very very important regime for practical purposes. So here, basically, as you have seen that uh, because the 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 uh, Kolovitz number has become greater than one, which means that your preheat zone thickness has become greater than the uh, than the Kolmogorov length scale. And uh, um, uh, that means essentially now, and also your flame time scale has become bigger than the Kolmogorov time scale. So then it means essentially that the Kolmogorov eddies can penetrate into the preheat zone and distort the structure. Actually, it can even broaden the uh, preheat zone in certain circumstances, and it can uh, essentially distort the structure. It adds to the diffusion uh, processes. It uh, now the molecular diffusion uh, can be overtaken by turbulent diffusion, um, uh, and uh, the preheat zone structure is really affected by turbulent in this reaction sheet limit. But still because um, as you know because the reaction zone thickness is still um, reaction zone thickness by the preheat zone thickness for a normal laminar premix flame is essentially given by the 1 by Zeldovich number. The reaction zone thickness is still uh, smaller than the preheat zone thickness and uh, if it is substantially smaller in the sense that uh, this now there is still the reaction zone thickness is smaller um, than the Kolmogorov eddies, um, Kolmogorov eddy sizes, then uh, the Kolmogorov eddy sizes can only distort the preheat zone structure and it cannot distort the reaction zone structure. Okay. So, that is why this is called the reaction sheet limit and uh, you still basically have a, a little bit of a distorted, um, uh, you have a, a convoluted uh, reaction zone, but the internal structure is not disturbed. But if you have a situation which you have in this well stirred reactor situation that is if you have a situation where uh, your um, where your uh, Kolmogorov size eddies have become essentially smaller than the reaction uh, zone thickness. Okay, so uh, LR is even larger than eta. Okay, so this region is essentially means that LR is essentially larger than eta. So if that is the situation, that means the Kolovitz number is very very large. Uh, uh, I mean, it's even the reaction uh, Kolovitz number is large greater than one. So then what happens is that the the flamelet structure is completely destroyed. So even the reaction zone structure does not behave like a uh, that of the laminar flame, and it's a well still behaves like at least like a, a distributed flamelet. The of the flame becomes distributed into several parts, and it behaves uh, approximates that of a well stirred reactor. Okay. So, this part is essentially called the uh, uh, well stirred reactor or this, uh, um, this regime. There can be other um, uh, regime diagrams also exist, the above is just one example.